Hello, I'm Anthony Hughes, and in this video, I shall be showing you how to record music in real time using a MIDI keyboard in Dorico. First, it's important to set up your system to allow MIDI input from an external keyboard or synthesizer. To do this, it should be as simple as connecting your MIDI keyboard to one of your computer's USB ports. You'll find a list of connected MIDI input devices in Dorico's Preferences dialog in the Play category. Ensure that your keyboard is listed and checked. You'll be able to tell that Dorico is receiving MIDI data by this green light that appears when you play notes on your keyboard. In order to prime Dorico for recording, you must first ensure there are enough bars for the amount of music you wish to play. Dorico will not add more bars automatically, and recording will stop when you reach the end of the flow. Add a sufficient number of bars either by using the system track or the bars and bar lines panel or popover. In order to get the best results, it is a good idea to have a quick look at the quantization options in preferences, which can be found again in the play category. Think about the sort of music you'll be playing and the likely shortest note durations it will contain. Set this first control to that shortest duration. If your music is likely to contain tuplets, you can tell Dorico also to look out for them here. Fill gaps will look at the gaps you're leaving between notes and make intelligent decisions about filling them to make your music look more natural. So I recommend leaving this option switched on unless you're experiencing unsatisfactory results. Select the staff and rhythmic position at which you would like to start recording. Press the record button on the toolbar or use the key command Ctrl R, and that's Command R on Mac. You'll be given one bar count in and then recording starts. Once you've completed playing the music you wish to record, press the space bar on your computer keyboard or the stop button. The music you played is now rendered by Dorico. When inputting music for grand staff instruments such as a piano, Dorico intelligently arranges the music using separate voices and a floating split point, using the context of what you play to determine its results. With only a little practice, you'll find that inputting music in real time is quick and reliable. And thanks to Dorico's powerful editing tools, it's easy to rework the placement of notes to your intended staff and voice. Recording at a rhythmic position that already contains notes will remove that music and replace it with your new performance. If you prefer to record in sections, perhaps first inputting the right hand of a piano part and then the left, engage chord mode in order to retain your existing input. You can record into a specific voice by first arming the carrot in that voice, creating one if necessary, before starting record. Dorico will interpret your performance and can render certain characteristics as specific notations. In Preferences Play category, there is a recording section that has options to detect pedal lines, slurs, tremolos and trills. There's an option to snap pedal lines to the previous beat because one tends naturally to depress the pedal just after playing the note that the pedal line should be attached to. When Detect Slurs is enabled, Dorico will look for notes performed with slight overlaps that you may have played slurred rather than detached. Detecting tremolos is perhaps more relevant when importing MIDI, unless you're a twiddle fingers when it comes to your keyboard skills. Playing trills for Dorico to identify is a little easier. There are also options to preserve the velocities and note positions of your performance. This is very useful when creating natural sounding mock-ups of your music, as it is one of the easiest ways to inform that human aspect. You can see the extent of this performance data in the key editor, where you can edit further if necessary. If you would prefer Dorico to use its own knowledge and intelligence to create the performance heuristics, then disable these options. If you do preserve velocities or note positions, you can at any point make a selection of notes and choose from the play menu, Reset Playback Overrides. 
Earlier I mentioned the one bar count in and you will have noticed the click that guides your recording takes. This click comes from the inbuilt metronome and you can enable the metronome for playback as well as recording. In order for the metronome to work, the flow must have a time signature and users of Dorico Pro can access playback options to manage the click and number of bars count in. If a section of music would be easier to record at a slower speed, you can put playback in fixed tempo, then set the beats per minute to something more manageable. All tempo markings, including immediate and gradual changes, will be ignored by Dorico's playback when fixed tempo is enabled. You may find that when your performance is rendered, you realize a different set of quantization settings may have been preferable. Or while the majority of the take was concerned with quarter notes, there was a sudden run of 16th notes in the middle. In these instances, it is easy to re-quantize any section of your recording. Simply make a selection of the notes that do not accurately represent the durations you played. Choose Edit, Re-Quantize, set the new options, and press OK. I find this can be useful when, say, you encounter a small outcrop of triplets in an otherwise tuplet-free passage. Sometimes you may have found yourself playing along with Dorico's playback, enjoyed a rare moment of inspiration, and then wish you'd been recording. If this happens to you, go immediately to Play Retrospective Record, and Dorico will recall what you played, just like magic, inputting it as if you had indeed been recording all along. Phew, it's in the bag. Now, real-time MIDI recording can take a little practice to get the results you are looking for, especially with more complicated performances. In these cases, I suggest trying some different quantization settings in preferences. And if you find your notes are continually being noted ahead of the beat, try adding some MIDI input latency compensation. If you're having the converse problem of your notes being notated behind the beat, then try increasing the buffer size for your audio device. And that's real-time MIDI input in Dorico. I'm Anthony Hughes. Thanks for watching.